Okay, this is my second of uh, three videos about how to memorize the amino acids. We're memorizing them by groups uh, in terms of whether they're hydrophobic, hydrophilic, positively charged, or negatively charged. So we already did the hydrophobic amino acids with the start of the story, G, Al, Val, and Lou isolated some proper meth, and now they're freaking tripping. So we continue the story with the electrically charged amino acid, and it qu is quite a charged story already. They try to make some dinner, but they get glue on their asparagus, which is a negative experience for them. Okay? So asparagus, uh, we're going to do asparagus first, A before G in the alphabet. Asparagus reminds us of aspartate. Uh, and aspartate was actually discovered studying asparagus. So, a little bit of trivia for you there. Uh, ASP makes sense. The D, I guess you could think of mispronouncing it, aspartate or something. Uh, so it's basically just you got your beta carbon and then you've got this carboxyl group on. So there, you need a carboxyl group to make it uh, acidic, make it negatively charged, and you just attach that to your beta carbon. So it's basically as simple as simple as you can get. Um, keeping in mind that all of these have beta carbons except for the the very first one, glycine. So um, then we have glutamate. It spells glue, which is what they got in their asparagus. Um, it's just a little bit more complicated. It's just got one more carbon before you have that carboxyl group. Great. So far, so good. So they had that negative experience uh, trying to make some nice asparagus for dinner. Uh, then they get in an argument, of course, because they're all high on meth. And uh, Al says to Val, listen, I have a history of arguing when I'm positive I'm right. Listen, I have a history of arguing when I'm positive I'm right. So those are the positive amino acids. Listen sounds a lot like lysine. Lysine to me. Um, L-Y-S makes sense. K doesn't seem super intuitive. Uh, it's right next to L in the alphabet. Uh, and you could also imagine uh, Lou saying, listen, listen to Val. And Val goes, K, I'm listening. Uh, just a little image in your head. So this is a chain of four carbons. And then it's got NH3 plus at the end there. Okay. Then you've got histidine. H I S H, that's very intuitive. And the way I look at this is it's like H makes me think of a house. And this is a little house, which is then attached to our beta carbon. And this house has two nitrogens uh, on it. And you've got some double bonds. And the first side chain in our story had one N. The second side chain in our story has two Ns. Okay, last not, but not least, arginine. And arg is its abbreviation, and of course, I think like a pirate, arginine. R is the one-letter code. And it's also got four carbons in its chain, but the last carbon is actually uh, locked up in a guanidine group, which looks like this. So 
So um, this is guanidine. And you see there's a G is the last letter in um, the three letter code for arginine. And the last carbon in the chain is actually uh, a guanidine group with the uh, nitrogen linking it to the other uh, three carbons. So that is the state of affairs. Uh, things are not going well for them. Let's see what happens in the dramatic conclusion of the story when we check out the remaining hydrophilic amino acids in the final video.